So good day everyone. Today I will be discussing the last topic under the final term in Specialized Crime Investigation 2 with simulation of interview and interrogation. So uh, what are the cardinal points in criminal investigation? So we are familiar in the cardinal points in terms of criminal investigation and those are the WH question, WH questions, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. So who committed it or we are identifying the suspects. Next, what? What specific crime was committed? So, the name and the designation of the crime should be included. Next, when? When was it committed? Or when was the crime has been committed? So, you should take down the exact date and time it was being committed. Next, where was the offense committed? Or where was the crime committed? So, it is the location of the crime scene. Next, why? Why was it committed? Ito na po yung the motive and intent of the suspect. Kung bakit niya nagawa yung isang crime. And the last is how. How was the offense committed? Ano ba yung modus operandi na ginamit ng suspect kung paano niya na-commit ang crime? Next, the trichotomy or criminal investigation. First, the trichotomy study of three parts of the body of criminal investigation. And those are training tools and techniques. So when we say training, it is the key to freedom from bondage of ignorance. So if we were skilled and well equipped in investigation, alam natin kung ano yung gagawin natin once na nagkandak na tayo ng investigation. Next will be the tools. It is the information, interview, interrogation, and instrumentation. Ito na po yung ginagawa natin kung paano natin may i-apply yung training na nagawa na natin. Next is the techniques. Updated techniques in investigation. Since we are trained at may tools na tayo gagamitin, ano naman yung technique natin kung paano natin may i-apply si tools and training na napag-aralan na natin or napagdaanan natin. Next, the, gold, the golden rules for criminal investigators. So, ano ba yung golden rules for criminal investigator? Identify and if possible, retain for questioning the person who first notify the police. Next, determine the perpetrator by direct inquiry or through observation if his identity is Obvious. Ito na po yung papasok na dito yung WH question natin or yung cardinal question natin. Next, detain all persons present at the crime scene. It doesn't mean na dinitain ka is makukulong ka na agad. Kailangan lang pong dumaan po tayo sa inquiry para po malaman natin kung ano, po, ano ba talaga yung nangyari sa crime scene. Next, summon assistance if necessary. So, you should assign specific duties na maaari nyo makatulong in conducting investigation. Next, immediately separate witnesses or suspect for the purposes of securing independent statement. Kasi pag, na, pag magkasama sila, especially si witness at si suspect, pwedeng takutin ni suspect si witnesses or si witness. Ngayon si witness, mag-iiba na yung kanyang statement. Kaya po kailangan silang paghiwalayin para alam natin yung both sides na nangyari sa crime scene kasi maaring si suspect ay nagsisinungaling, maaring uh, si witness ay hindi. O kaya si witness, iba yung statement niya, iba naman ang statement ni suspect. Next, protect the area by giving appropriate orders and by physically isolating it. So you have to secure the area kasi nga po, once na may na-alter dyan, hindi na po siya pwedeng gamitin or pwede siyang gamitin as evidence pero hindi na siya po magiging strong evidence. Next is, permit only authorized person to enter the crime scene boundary. And lastly po, do not touch or move any object found at the crime scene. 
Next, phases of criminal investigation. So, we already uh, tackled it during your midterm. I think midterm. Yung phases of criminal investigation, preliminary investigation, follow-up investigation, and concluding investigation. So, when we say preliminary investigation, also known as initial investigation, which is focused in identifying the perpetrators. Ito na po yung crime scene investigation natin. Next is the follow-up investigation, also known as following investigation or in-depth investigation. It is focused eventually in tracing, locating, and arresting the suspect. Kaya nga po siya tinawag na follow-up. And last is the concluding investigation, also called as final investigation. It is focused in evaluating and presenting evidence to prove the guilt of the Accused. Next, when does criminal investigation commence? Upon receiving a report from a concerned citizen witness, witnesses, upon receiving a report from the offended party, and personal knowledge that the crime was committed. Next, upon arriving at the crime scene, the first responder must P. Proceed to the scene promptly and safely as soon as possible. Next, render assistance to the injured party. Next, effect arrest of the criminal. Hindi po uh, nakita natin si criminal dun hahayaan lang natin. Kailangan po as much as possible i-arrestuhin na po natin. Next, locate and identify witnesses. Interview complainant, victim, witnesses. Maintain the integrity of crime scene and protect evidences. Kaya nga po, pag nadating po yung first responder natin, ang uh, first na ginagawa po nila is to secure the area. Next, interrogate suspects if necessary. Note conditions, events, and remarks. Arrange for collection of evidences. Report the entire incident fully and accurately. And lastly, yield responsibility to follow up investigator of superior officer. Kasi po kung si first responder is wala po siyang nagawa. Once na nakadating na po siya or naka-arrive na siya sa crime scene, wala pong uh, magiging follow up investigation. Ito po yung tinatawag nating preliminary. Next, tools in criminal investigation. So, what are the tools in criminal investigation? We have information, interview, interrogation. So, information, it is the key tool. Kasi kung wala pong information natin, wala po tayong magagamit na, uh, wala po tayong pwedeng pagbasihan kung ano po yung nangyari sa crime scene. So, information, is, it is the key tool in criminal investigation. So, in general, it refers to the knowledge acquired by criminal investigators from various sources which could be in the form of person, places, or yung tinatawag nating crime scene or things, yung records or files or physical evidences. So, the information, it is the most weapon of investigators, more powerful than gun or money. Always take note that. The information is more powerful than gun or money. Kung wala si information, wala po tayong magiging basis, wala po tayong gagawin o hindi po magkakaroon ng progress ang isang investigation. Next, methods of obtaining information. First is through interview, patrol or reconnaissance, crime scene search, Regular performance of policing activities and custodial interrogation. Kasi once na naka-arrive na yung first responder natin sa crime scene, meron na po agad tayong information na makukuha. It's either through interview, patrol or recognizance, crime scene search, na most important din dahil kung hindi natin isa-search yung crime scene, wala pong magiging progress ng ating investigation. Regular performance of policing activities and custodial interrogation. Next is interview. So, as applied in criminal investigation, it refers to the simple and friendly questioning of a person who has knowledge relevant to the crime or case under investigation. It is the first and foremost method in obtaining information. 
In most cases, a great part of the investigator's time is devoted in questioning people who possess significant information concerning a criminal case. So, interview, the person being questioned is usually ready kasi hindi naman po tayo nag interview sa tao na hindi ready. Pwede po natin siyang i-interview pero tatanungin natin siya kung magbibigay siya ng information or hindi. Kung hindi po siya magbibigay ng information, hindi natin siya pwede pilitin. Those who are ready, willing, and able to talk freely. He willingly provides information how a criminal incident took place, thus offering testimony in his own manner and wordings. It is the questioning based on senses. Kung ano lang po yung nakita niya, as in yung play na nakita niya doon sa pangyayari, on yung observation niya sa nangyari, hindi po natin siya kailang i-interrogate. Makaiba po ang interview and interrogation. Pwede natin siyang i-interview pero hindi natin siya agad pwede i-interrogate. Interview meaning po, plain lang po siya. Plain na tanungan lang po. True? Uh, the observation of the senses or questioning based on the senses. Next, the golden rule in interview. Never conduct or let anyone conduct an interview if the interviewer has not gone to the crime scene. So, questions during the interview should agree with the facts and conditions at the crime scene. If the interviewer did not personally see the crime scene, his question will be inconsistent since the questioning process is not systematic. The interviewer may not be able to distinguish half-truths exaggerations or falsehood from the answers of the person being interviewed. Hindi po pwedeng mag-interview ang mga uh, ta or investigator o yung kung sino man po ang pwedeng mag-interview ng hiwala siyang knowledge sa crime scene. Halimbawa po, may mga investigator na pumunta doon pero ang nag-interview wala doon sa pumunta sa crime scene. Therefore, hindi po mapapatunayan or hindi po uh, magiging maayos yung flow ng interview nila kasi wala pong, yung mismong interviewer ay walang knowledge doon sa nangyari crime scene. Okay, next. Types of interview used in criminal cases. First is the background interview. So, in accomplishing an interview report, the following are background data that must be indicated. Date and time of interview, setting or place of interview, full name and address of the suspect, educational background, names and whereabouts of relatives, personality traits, habits and habits, marital status and numbers of children, profession or vocation, type and tenure of employment or contract, name of employer, superiors and or associate in his job, membership in any organization, honesty, discretion, and loyalty to his job and his organization, and references for evaluation of the subject. So, meaning, it, this is an interview that is focused only in obtaining data regarding the personal background of the subject. This is the simplest type of interview used in criminal cases. Next is subjective interview. When we say subjective interview, this is the type of interview whereby questions are phrased in a manner such the subject's answers are based on his personal opinions or views. Questions are designed to deal with the subjective aspect of the case, meaning it is only based on the insights of the persons or individual who saw the crime scene. Take note, insight lang po. Insight lang po pag sinabing subjective. Pag sinabing background, ito po yung simplest type of interview in criminal cases kasi po nakafocus lang po siya sa data regarding the personal background of the suspect. Third is the objective interview. It is the questions or the questions are designed to acquire the basic and specific data or facts regarding a criminal case. So, this is the type that complies with the six cardinal points of criminal investigation. Ito na po yung 5Ws and 1H natin na, na kinakailangan natin para makakuha po tayo ng specific or facts or specific data or facts regarding sa crime or sa criminal case na nangyari. Next, cognitive interview. It is a type of interview appropriate for willing and cooperative witnesses 
Witnesses of this kind should be given the opportunity to narrate their accounts without intervention, interruption, and interference from the interviewer. So, cognitive interview. So, after the subject has finished his narration, the interviewer should apply a technique similar to direct examination and cross-examination. Para saan po? To clarify details that need to be explained. So, the purpose is arriving at the vivid and complete picture of the testimony. Since meron na po tayong uh, background investigation, subjective interview, objective interview, sa cognitive interview na andito na po yung uh, gagamit na po si interviewer ng ibang technique or iba't ibang technique para po maipalabas or maklarify natin yung details na kailangan nating malaman na hihingin natin mismo or ma-explain mismo ng suspect para po ito ay makaaray sa isang complete uh, na uh, data or complete na information na makukuha natin sa subject natin. Next is, what are the three stages of interview? First is the preliminary interview. It is the initial questioning of the subject. So, it is usually conducted at the crime scene though it may be carried out carried out at the subject's name or home or workplaces. So, it is the initial questioning of the subject since uh, once na naka-arrive na po si first responder natin, ang una pong ginagawa is to secure the area and to interview yung mga taong nandun po para po makakuha po tayo ng information. Next is follow-up interview. This is the second or succeeding questioning to obtain further information that was missed during the first Questioning. Ito po yung to clarify data that has been already gathered. Since meron na tayong preliminary, sa follow-up po, ikaklarify po natin yung nagathered nating data during the preliminary interview. Next is the final interview. This is the last questioning that may lead to the act of offering a witness to testify in court during trial. So, it is one of the ways kung paano magkakaroon ng progress ang isa kaso. Sa final interview, ito na po yung, uh, yung witness, ikailangan na po mag-testify sa court. Pero kung hindi po niya gustong mag-testify, again, hindi po natin pipilitin ang isang witness na mag-testify kung hindi po siya bukal sa loob niya or kung napipilitan lang po siya. Dapat po, uh, nandun na po yung free will niya na magbigay ng information sa korte. Kasi karamihan sa pwedeng mag-testify ng witnesses is natatakot dahil din po sa panganib or pwedeng mangyari sa pamilya nila or yung threat na uh, ibibigay ng suspect sa family nila. Next, what are the qualities of good and competent interviewer? So, they should be adaptable, objective, patient, persuasive, insightful, and sensitive to individual rights. According to them, C. 2003. So, when we say adaptable, uh, the invest, our interviewer should be flexible, adjustable, pliable, malleable, and compliant. Adaptable, the interviewers are looking for a person who can able to adapt in their situations. The way they respond to question about adaptability tells the interviewer more about their work methods, flexibility, and ability to stay calm under pressure. Well, objective, aim, idea, point, purpose, or intention. Meaning, they need to have a purpose or aim in interviewing, not just only interview, but rather, they need to have an intention because it is a great help for the progress of their investigation. Next is, being patient, long-suffering, entering, tolerant, un uncomplaining, and serene. Kasi hindi natin may iwasan na may may interview tayo na maangas or mas malala pa nga. So, we need to be patient and as much as possible, if we can level ourselves for them, gawin natin para hindi sila mag-hesitate to give information to us. I'm not saying na lumebel tayo na kung siya ay sobrang angas, magiging maangas ka din. I mean, uh, yung pag-level natin sa kanila, eh, kung ano lang po yung kaya nila as a person, doon po natin ilelevel. Kasi po, kapag po uh, nakikita ng ini-interview natin or ng suspect natin na sobra tayo mapagmataas, may possibility na matakot siya or hindi na siya magbigay ng 
information. Next, persuasive, influential, swaying, convincing, believable, and winning. Kaya dapat mabuo natin ng mutual trust sa isa't isa sa conduct pa lang ng interview. So, it is designed to provide a realistic, persuasive situation in which we can analyze the interviewee's situation. Research an issue, structure a problem-solution interview, and adapt evidence, a few strategies and tactics to a specific interview in a specific situation. Kasi po, kung may mutual trust tayo sa isa't isa, possible na maging kalmado po ang kinakausap natin towards us. Next insightful, being understanding, discerning, astute, shrewd, aware, and intuitive. Meaning, the interviewer needs to show understanding to his or her interviewee so that both parts will be known and their side shall be clearly stated. And lastly, yung sensitive to individual rights na hindi po tayo pwedeng magsalita na pwedeng maka-open po sa isang ini-interview natin or sa subject natin. Next, step in conducting an interview. First is preparation. So, we have to review facts at the crime scene and information from other sources or ito na po yung background data po natin towards the suspect or the subject. Next is approach. Uh, ito po yung uh, combination, single or yung both, single and combination. So, pag single po, andito po yung basic uh, questions natin. Kapag po combination, something about difficult or critical Question. Sa combination po, nandyan na po yung unti-unti uh, na po niyang itatanong yung about sa crime scene or about sa ginawa niyang kasalanan. Well, sa all, it talks about you and your knowledge in the situation happen. Kung sa single po, basic question lang sa approach, ito na po yung unti-unti uh, question about doon sa nangyari. Well, dun po sa all or yung combination na ng lahat is nandyan na po yung Uh, about sa background mo, ano yung relation mo dito, ano yung relation mo sa uh, kanya or sa victim mo, ano yung ginawa mo at bakit mo siya ginawa. Lahat po ng question na pwede mong itanong ay nandun na po. Next, warming up. Ito na po yung preliminary or exploratory question to clear the atmosphere and promote conducive place for cordiality. Next is recounting. Cognitive interview. Pag sinabing cognitive interview, allowing or asking the subject to narrate. Na hindi lang po ikaw yung magsasabi, as, in, as interviewer, hindi ka lang po ikaw yung magsasalita. Dapat po, bigyan mo ng chance na magsalita ang ini-interview mo para alam mo yung side ng ini-interview mo. Next, questioning for clarification and ending the interview. So sa ending na interview, hindi ka lang po basta alis. So, kailangan po as a professional, as an interviewer, kailangan mas maganda po yung maging uh, paalam mo or mas maganda yung maging end ng interview nyo. Six components of interview. First, identify the interviewer. Second, uh, rapport between the interviewer and interviewee. So, to challenge inconsistency, inconsistencies in the subject story. So, sa rapport, ibig sabihin, kailangan po meron kayong understanding at alam mo kung paano mo iintindihan si subject mo. Kasi kapag hindi mo inintindi si subject mo, kung ikaw ay mainit, mainitin ng ulo as an interviewer, so makikita nyo naman, gaya nga nung nangyari sa famous na case ngayon, yung sa police at dun sa mag-ina, kailangan po ma-establish yung rapport na hindi lang po tayo basta-basta mainitin ng ulo. Kailangan, pag tayo ay mag interview since we are professional, kailangan po mahaba yung pasensya natin para po mas maganda yung maging outcome. Kasi kung mas madadala po tayo sa init ng ulo, ang magiging ending po, makakasakitan lang. Gaya nga po dun sa uh, famous na balita ngayon dun sa criminal case na double murder. Next, opening statement. Next is the narration. Bakit kailangan ng narration? So, to obtain additional information. Next, inquiry or direct questioning and 
conclusion. Ito po yung ironic format natin. Identify the interviewer, rapport between the interviewer and interviewee, opening statement, narration, inquiry, and conclusion. Next, rules in direct questioning. Use the subject's language. Hindi naman po pwede na, for example, bisaya si subject mo, tapos ikaw ay Englishero. Hindi kayo magkakaintindihan kung hindi talaga naiintindihan ng subject mo. So, use the subject's language, meaning po, it doesn't mean na bisaya siya, magbibisaya ka din. Tatanungin mo kung ano yung language na alam niya na pwede alam mo rin para po magkaintindihan kayo. Next, ask questions one at a time. Avoid yes or no question. Kasi po, pag yes or no lang ng yes or no, wala po tayong makukuha na data or information. Avoid leading question. So, sa conduct po ng interview, kapag simula pa lang na interview, huwag po kayo agad mag interview towards the leading question. I, uh, i-relax mo muna yung isip ng subject mo. Magtanong ka kung taga saan ka, anong pangalan mo. Relevant question muna bago po tayo mag-ask ng control question. Pag sinabing control question, eto na po yung maglilid sa kanila or maglilid sa atin paano natin malalaman kung ano yung talagang nangyari sa crime scene. Next, keep questions simple. Yung mas madali lang po nilang maintindihan at masasagot. Masasagot. And uh, avoid embarrassing questions. So, types of subject in an interview. The know nothing type, the know nothing type, be with their level or apply interrogation, disinterested type, or find field of interest or and remove indifference. Sa so, disinterested type po, uh, kailangan po, dun ka, kapag alam mo hindi na interesado si suspect mo, kailangan makaisip ka ng question na pwede uh, mag, makakapagpa-interesado sa kanya or makakapagpa-willing sa kanya to answer your question. Next, the drunken type. Adapt to the psychology of the subject. Confronted. So, sa drunken type, hindi po ibig sabihin yan ay uh, ang sabi ko po dyan, adapt to the psychology. Hindi po ibig sabihin nun, iya, adapt mo ko ano yung uh, naging type niya or type of the subject. So, kung ano po yung perspective niya sa pagsagot, kung paano siya sumagot, kailangan po uh, intindihin nyo at kailangan masabayan nyo. Next, suspicious type, remove indifference. Kasi po, ang mga suspect, karamihan dyan matatalino na uh, magsisinungaling sila or bibilugin yung ulo mo. So, kailang, kasi nagsususpecha na sila na huhulihin ako nito. Ang perspective agad nila, ikukulong ako nito. Kailangan makaisip ako ng paraan kung paano hindi nila ako mahuhuli at ano yung uh, pwede kong sabihin ng saan uh, ma, ma, lalampasan ko yung kaso ko. Next, talkative type. Prune the unnecessary matter. So, sa talkative type natin, alam nyo naman na kapag Ang, ang subject ay talkative type, kailangan kayo ay hindi po makisabay sa kanya as being talkative. Kailangan po be professional in your own little way. Next, honest witness, the investigator could rely upon. So, sa honest witnesses po natin, kapag ka, si investigator ay nagtanong, yung mga statement niya is magagamit natin para po, uh, para po sa court proceedings. Kung magkakaroon man po ng court Proceedings. Next, decide full type. Let him lie. He will be endless with contradictions. Kasi mas maraming, uh, kasi nung alingan, mas, kasi po, pag interviewer ka, may knowledge ka na. Ibig sabihin, alam mo kung nagsisinungaling si suspect or hindi. And yun yung way mo, para ngayon, tanongin ngayon siya ng tanongin about dun sa ginawa niya hanggang sa mapaamin niyo siya. Next, timid type. Friendly and reassuring confidentiality, boastful, egoistic or egocentric type, and untalkative witnesses. Sa untalkative witnesses po, meron naman po dyan witnesses na uh, magsasalita lang pero hindi niya sasabihin lahat. Kasi po, playing safe siya na ayaw niyong magkaroon ng threat towards her or towards him or towards their family. Next, the principle of interview and interrogation. 
So, sa principles po na interview and interrogation, the right officer asking the right questions in the right manner at the right time, at the right place, will get the right answer. So, alam ko naman na familiar kayo dito kasi naririnig nyo na rin siya uh, siguro sa mga ibang teachers nyo. So, take note lang po na principle of interview and interrogation is the right officer asking the right questions in the right manner, at the right time, at the right place, you'll get the right answers. So, let's proceed with interrogation. So, what is the mode of questioning during interrogation? So, sa mode of questioning during interrogation, it is being aggressive and confrontational. Aggressive, ayan nga po, antagonistic, forceful, violent, hostile, insistent, belligerent, and destructive. Forceful na po yan pag interrogation. Ito po yung difference na interview and interrogation. Sa interview po, simple lang po. While well, sa interrogation, kailangan na po ng skillful and forceful questioning. Excuse me. Next, to whom it can be utilized. So, to whom it can be utilized, of course, for the suspected, suspected offender and uh, recalcitrant witnesses or dun sa mga witnesses na uh, pwede natin magamit sa conduct ng investigation or sa progress ng investigation for challenging, provoking, stimulating, offensive, and insulting. Kailangan po uh, gamitin natin yung uh, skills natin and capability natin, ability natin sa pagtatanong as an interviewer or interrogationer para po uh, makuha natin yung facts or yung information na kailangan natin. Next, purposes of interrogation. To extra confession or if not, admission. To elicit valuable information, learn surrounding surrounding verbally spelling of a criminal incident, determine existence and location of physical evidence, learn the identity of principals, accomplices, and accessories, discover or locate fruits of the crime, develop additional leads, and to discover other crimes in which the subject have been participated. Kasi doon pa lang po sa interrogation mismo, malalaman na po natin kung meron na ba siyang crime na na-participated dati. Kasi nga po, meron tayong tinatawag na relevant and controlled question. Sa controlled question, andyan na po yung pwede nating malaman kung meron ba siyang nakaraan na kaso or wala. Next, the interrogation room. So, the room chosen for the interrogation should provide freedom from distractions. So, it should be designed for simplicity with a view to enhancing the concentration of both of the interrogation and the subject on the matter under interrogation. So, ayan po, makikita nyo naman po yung room for investigation. Sobrang simple lang po. Kasi po, pag maraming gamit yan, malaki yung chance na magamit na to para makapanlaban po siya sa interrogator natin. Next, privacy. Interruption, dispel of concentration that may have been carefully cultivated by the investigator. Hence, the following are desirable. First is restricted entrance or single door is preferable. Single door is preferable because several doors suggest possible interruption and destroy the sense of focus attention. Na kapag marami po yung pintuan, uh, mas malaki po yung chance ng pagkakaroon ng distraction sa pagkakaroon nila ng interrogation. Next, absence of window or view. Kasi po, para po hindi po doon ma-focus yung attention ng ini-interview natin or ini-interrogate natin. Next, soundproofing. Telephone without bell. Ayan po. Investigator. Ito po makita nyo po si investigator. Then, si suspect po, nandyan po siya sa may pinto. Kasi po, pag po nandito siya sa may upuan ni investigator, ma uh, maakit po siya or maa-attract siya dun sa pintuan. And yung po, uh, pag na-attract siya dun, possible na maka-escape po siya at matakasan niya si investigator. Yun po yung purpose po. Kaya po, uh, ganan po yung pwesto ni investigator and suspect. Next, 
Simplicity, gaya nga po nung sabi ko kanina, simplicity, distracting influence should be kept minimum. The suspect may strive to avoid the investigator concentration by focusing his attention in some object in the room which suggests a different train of thought. Medium-sized room, bare walls, pictures, and charts are distracting. So, sa medium size, hindi po kasi pwede na ang interrogation room natin ay napakalaki. Kailangan lang po is maliit. Para po, uh, rinig na rinig nyo at, ala, at wala po masyadong distraction doon sa ini-interview mo. Next, no glaring lights, minimum furniture. Ayan po. Telephone without bell, video camera, pero hindi po nila alam na meron or hindi po alam ni suspect na may video camera dyan. Kasi po, in, yung pong room na yan is good for interrogation lang po. Next, doors. And wall clock, wall clock, lights. Yung lights po niyan, hindi po yan yung uh, sobrang, kailangan po yung simpleng ilaw lang po. Hindi po yung uh, makakadistract po sa suspect. Next, one-way mirror. Sa so, one-way mirror po, Nakikita po nung nasa labas yung ah, nasa loob pero yung nasa loob po hindi niya nakikita. Kaya nga po siya tinawag na one way mirror. And eto pong nasa labas na to, isa po siya sa investigator or kumukuha na information towards the suspect. Next, technical aid recording installation, important interrogations and confessions should be recorded. Listening device, a hidden microphone such as a light telephone should be installed. One-way mirror, this device appears to be a plain mirror on one side but permits a person on the other side to see through without being observed. Ayan po yung recorder. Ito po yung nagre-record po sa labas. Then yung recording device na ginagamit niya and the one-way mirror. Seating arrangement. Yan nga po yung sabi ko kanina, the subject and the investigator should be seated with no large furniture between them. Chair, armless, straight box, back chair for suspect. Para po relax po si suspect. Kasi po pag naka-armchair yan, kapangit naman po nag interview na, pagalaw-galaw po si suspect. Table or desk, the investigator requires a flat surface on which to place papers and articles of evidence. And the suspect, seating the suspect with the back of the door further deprived him of any hope of interruptions or distraction. Ayan po, suspect, table, armless chair. Next. Recorder, listening device, suspect. Pero po yung mga listening device na nandyan po, hindi po yan... Uh, alam ni suspect kung ano ba ang purpose niyan. Basta lang po, yan ay nakalagay sa interrogation room. Next, the interrogation session. The interrogation session, the investigator should be prepared up to date on the reconstruction of the crime scene. Recogniz ay, cognizant of facts secured in parallel inquiries into the motive and opportunity, know as much as possible about the suspect and the facts connecting him or her with the crime scene. Know the findings of the criminalist to examine any physical evidence that has been collected and certain uh, that the suspect is not an emotional state that might impair his or her capacity for rational judgment. So, sa interrogation session, it offers the suspect opportunity to clear himself or to spill everything and hope for the best. So, sa interrogation, dyan na po sasabihin ni suspect kung uh, para po ma-clear yung pangalan niya kung wala talaga siyang ginagawa or uh, ito na po yung dahilan kung bakit uh, kung bakit po siya ma-apprehend ma or kung bakit Uh, siya, talaga yung napil, uh, siya talaga yung gumawa ng crime kasi sa interrogation, once na ina-interrogate ka as a suspect tatanggi ka, magsisinungaling ka pero once na nandyan ka na sa interrogation session o nandun na sa part na interrogation nandyan na po yung chance mo as suspect para po maklear ang pangalan mo at para uh, po magkakaroon ba ng pag-asa na maklear yung case mo or hindi Next, specific interrogation techniques. First is the emotional appear. 
the investigator is an actor and psychologist. It appeals to the emotion of the suspect until he confesses, and it is applicable to first-time offender only, emotional person, and nervous. Next is sympathetic approach. Dig first into past troubles, unfortunate events in the life of suspect. So it offers help, kindness, and friendship to win his cooperation. Next is friendly approach. Create a pleasant and welcoming atmosphere. So, it shows sincerity to induce the subject or the suspect in confessing. Next, tricks and bluffs. So, baka familiar po kayo sa tricks and bluffs. The pretense of solid evidence against the accused, the weakest link, drama, feigning contact with the family members, the line-up, and the reverse line-up. So, the, sa tricks and bluffs, they use different tricks to get enough information to the suspect in order to have a progress in report. Next, turn approach. Play strict and uncompromising personality. It pretends of physical evidence, yung jolting, indifference, feigning protection and consideration and giving opportunity to lie. Dahil tinetest nila ang suspect since you as an interviewer has a knowledge or had knowledge in the crime that he has been committed. Next is Mud and Jack method or yung sweet and sour technique. So these tactics involve a team of two interrogators who take apparently opposing approaches to the subject. So the interrogators may interview the subject alternately or may confront the subject at the same time. Meron po tayong tinatawag sa Mud and Jack method na good cup and bad cup. So sa good cup, they or the interviewer, the interrogator is trying to build rapport Although it involves psychological coercion na kahit na nagbubuo siya ng rapport between them, ay nandun pa rin po yung psychological coercion na, makuku na makakuha siya ng information. While doon sa bad cup, andyan na po yung fear, yung pride, ego, down inter interrogation techniques. Ito na po yung tatakutin mo si, uh, si suspect para makapagbigay siya ng information. Kung sa isa, nagbibuild siya ng rapport, sa isa naman po, nagbibuild uh, siya ng fear towards the suspect. Next, removing the ethnic or cultural barriers. So, there are common barriers to effective communication in terms of cultural perspective, like yung language barrier, behavioral differences, and emotional display. So, we need to remove it for the purpose of good and smooth communication. Next is searching for the soft spot. So, doon tayo sa maayos at good flow na interrogation. Dahil mas may express ng suspect ang gusto niyang sabihin, unlike those in coercive interrogation techniques, which leads to the collection of imminent threat intelligence. And last po is the other modern approaches. Those are the rationalization, projection, minimization, mitigation, extenuation, and maximization. So, when we say rationalization, it uses po as or uses of reason. Well, sa projection, it involves the attribution of one's own feeling onto others, meaning, nire-reflect mo ang sarili mo sa kanya. And next is minimization. Sa minimization po, it, at, it is a technique in which the interrogator mitigates the crime and plays down the seriousness of the offense. Mitigate. Pinapababa po ang seriousness ng offense. Well, sa maximization, ito po yung kabaligtaran, of course, ni minimizi, minimization. It is a technique in which the interrogator exaggerates the strength of the evidence and the magnitude of the sub-charges. Ito na po yung pagpapataas po ng uh, pagpapataas po ng seriousness of the offense. Kung si minimization, pagpapababa or mitigation, mitigating Well, sa maximization, pagpapataas po na uh, seriousness of the offense. So, eto pong dalawang to, minimization and maximization, are the two methods of possible effects of police interrogation towards the suspect. Ito po ay based po sa uh, interrogation na mangyayari at doon sa magiging outcome po ng interrogation nila. So, that will be all in... Uh, the last topic in our CDI 3, so I will end this in a quotation that it is better to let 10 guilty persons escape than let anyone or let one innocent person be falsely accused. 
So, uh, a criminal investigator who is not objective or who lacks integrity can be responsible for a guilty person's acquittal. He is also responsible for an innocent person's imprisonment, fine, or possibly even death, or the ruinization of an organization's reputation. So, meaning po, kaya po dapat as an investigator, ikaw mismo, alam mo ang gagawin mo. Dahil kapag ikaw mismo as an investigator ay nagkamali o hindi mo nagawa ng ayos yung trabaho mo, lahat po ay maapektuhan. So, that's all po. Thank you and good day.